Yeah, I know, I did say that the Galaxy S24 Ultra was amazing in my first few reviews, but after a month of using this as my main phone, things got a little bit interesting. Was that just a honeymoon phase that is ending now, or is this blossoming now into true love? Let's find out. Today, there's no script, so pardon the, the kind of the free flow aspect of this video here. Honestly, I think Samsung should have waited maybe a few more weeks before launching because what we've got here is a special device, right? It's not, there's no taking away from Samsung that they delivered top quality here as they normally do. Now, why do I say that they should have waited a few more weeks? That's pretty typical, isn't it? Just as I was editing this video today, it doesn't really change what I'm saying in this video, but what I'm saying in this video is based on the previous version. Today is the 23rd of February, so my review is for the first month before this update came out. There is one thing that we can check very quickly whether or not it's improved, which is the display, which I've been complaining since day one. Okay, do you know what? They fixed it. I mean, this is literally my first few seconds of looking at it. It does look more vivid. Yeah, it looks better. I'll do more tests on how it looks like with content and whatever, but it was mostly DUI. And I can tell already, it's a lot more vibrant and a lot more like a brand new Samsung phone should look like. But the overall experience is, this is like the, the final beta version when it comes to the software. For example, if you go into expert raw mode and you select 50 megapixels as the output quality of, of your photo, guarantee you, you, you're not gonna have a consistent experience. Unless I have a, a broken device, I've checked this with other people as well, and it seems to be the case. It seems to be in that specific scenario of perhaps low light, 50 megapixel and expert raw, two out of 10 pictures perhaps, you're gonna have an issue with it. There's gonna be lots of grain, it's just unusable. If you reduce the quality, which is crazy, to 12 megapixel and do the same thing, you get a much better quality in Expert Raw, which is weird, right? Because sometimes, you know, if you, if you are in that mode, you kind of said to yourself, I'm gonna take a high quality picture here. So 12 megapixel, you know, it's not what you, you paid for 50 and sometimes 200, you wanna take at the maximum uh, resolution. The other issue is one that I haven't really noticed that much, but I've, in my tests, have confirmed that some people say that it is a shutter lag issue. I don't call it a shutter lag. I think it's, you know, and I'm not defending Samsung here, by the way, right? But I think if you're going to take a photo that is 50 megapixel, 200 megapixel, you should expect a little lag. And you're likely gonna have a, a tripod. You're not really gonna be taking a photo of your kid moving around or, or a dog running, like a daily photo or something for Instagram, right? This is gonna be a special shot. But my recommendation so far, and I hope Samsung fixes this in the next update or whatever, whenever they release that, is to either go in pro mode and adjust the shutter speed yourself manually. There are workarounds about the experience of the shutter. I'm not talking about the button just clicking faster. I'm talking about the actual photo coming up, you know, sharp. If you can, keep the phone stable by using a mini tripod or something like that, or adjust the shutter speed using Expert Raw or, or pro mode on the camera. The other problem I've noticed, and I, and I took a long time to, to report on this because I don't like to say, you know, on the first two weeks that there's an issue with the battery. It has been less performant than my previous S23 Ultra. There are other issues and I promise that I will be talking about positive things as well in a minute, but just to kind of close the loop on a couple of other issues, one is with the durability of it. There is a little nick. I, um, I don't know how I got this scratch, but something accidentally just knocked it. I didn't drop it and it just feels like it scratched too easily. So I definitely recommend at the very least using a skin. I've got a couple here that I'll show you uh, or definitely a protective case or both if you want to really go like belt and braces on this. And the final, again, minor issue is the overall design. We're getting a lot in terms of screen real estate. It's a beautiful display for watching content. There's nothing better out there. Very, you know, no distractions almost and just beautiful to look at. But the trade-off, is the fact that, you know, it's got these sharp corners and for a long session, you are gonna feel a little bit of a fatigue in just holding the phone. Okay, so those are most of my criticisms that's out of the way. Right, the first thing that I have to call out on Samsung devices, and this has been the case for a while now, but One UI, you now 6.1 6 now, even though I said that it's not the finished article, there's so much functionality in here that is just incredible. For work, for getting things done, I don't think there's anything better, apart from maybe the fold. I mean, the fold itself is incredible for doing work. And it's not just the fact that you can multitask. And I think it's the way it allows you to do that. It's a very intuitive way. If it's your first time using an Android, I guarantee you, you're gonna be surprised by how smooth it is, how 
fluid the, the experience is. You know, sometimes you just want to use two apps and it's as simple as that, you know, just with two fingers, uh, app that way, and you can open two apps. It's not a good example here because you're using two social media apps and you're not really doing that uh, in, on a regular basis, but taking notes whilst watching a video, Absolutely. I do that pretty much every week when I'm researching for these videos, replying to messages via WhatsApp or a messaging app and using something like a banking application. So useful because sometimes, you know, you want to do those do two things at the same time. Just a quick reminder to like this video if you're enjoying it. This is not my typical video. I usually do a lot more in terms of production, but YouTube is not my only job. This is my evening now and I'm kind of rushing to go home and have dinner with my family. But I'd really appreciate if you give it a thumbs up because that really helps YouTube push this video to other people and I get discovered out there and we grow. We're so, so close now to 100K and I would love to have you here for when we do achieve that together. That would be awesome. And there's so much capability as well with, you know, that you get not just on the, on the fact that you've got an, an S Pen, but the software that drives the experience of the S Pen, fantastic. Not to mention that you can plug this into a monitor and I do that a lot and it becomes a computer, right? With Samsung DeX, awesome experience. In this form factor, I don't think there's anything better. Like I said, the closest we can get to this is the Fold and the Fold 5 is an amazing device for getting work done as well. Now, the other thing I wanna praise Samsung for is the actual, is the display. You know, taking what I, what I said about the colors not being accurate. Oh my gosh. I take it for granted now because I've been using Samsung phones for a while. But since having the S24 Ultra, every time I pick something different, like the Pixel, the, even the S23 Ultra here, uh, or the iPhone sometimes, I do notice there's a huge, huge difference, right? And, and I was like, I need to go back to my S24 Ultra now, you know, because it is, it is a beautiful display. And from a performance perspective, I've only noticed this when actually doing these videos, right? I'll be honest with you, I don't actually have time to play games and, you know, spend an hour or two a day. But for these videos, you know, over the weekends, you know, when I was testing it and comparing it with the iPhone, I did put this through its spaces, you know, doing some racing games, you know, Genshin Impact, which is one that usually gets phones really hot and sometimes, you know, drop frames and things like that. I didn't see any issues here, you know, playing in the max settings, everything was just beautiful, really. I gotta be honest though, you know, in comparison with the S23 Ultra, there's not a lot of difference, you know, because if you think about it, there's not much that you, you're doing on the phone that you will notice that extra boost in performance. You will notice that in sort of AI features and processing of images, of course, but they are not really something that translates to something opening faster, right? It just feels snappy. See what I did there? Let's talk about the cameras. And I'm super happy with the performance here. There are some issues with in some modes here, like I said earlier, but when you go to like, you go to portrait mode, honestly, it's one of the best portraits you will ever take. Gosh, it's an amazing, I mean, all the, the edge detection is great and the result is great. You know, as I mentioned in my previous video, when you look at what you're doing on the viewfinder, you think you've been scammed. You know, it's a really terrible, what you're looking at isn't great, but the result is fantastic. And I think the, the viewfinder issue is something that Samsung could fix by software. I'm not sure. It's not, you know, it's, it's not perfect. My experience with point and shoot photos, I do that every day, take a lot of photos for doing YouTube videos, right? What I did realize about the pro cam, when you go into the pro mode, is that it's just being so fun to just learn photography with it. You know, it does open up so many options that you don't see in other devices, apart from this one, this is the Sony Xperia, more on that in a, in a separate video. But I think when it comes to taking pro photos, this is on a completely different level, even to the Samsung. But that aside, you know, when you go to the pro mode in the S24 Ultra, you can do those really cool like star trails, you know, long exposure shots, you know, really fun to use, amazing photographs, you know, from an artistic perspective and like learning photography and learning how to do unique shots. And that goes back to extracting value of something, you know, this expensive. One of the improvements that I don't hear a lot of people talk about is the speakers. It's the first time that I noticed this being, for me anyway, better than the iPhone. The iPhone has always been great from a speaker's perspective. It had a fuller sound. And some people still think that that's the case even now with the 15 Pro Max versus this one. When you're listening to it through the speakers, I do think that Samsung nailed it this time. At least they've improved it a lot. Now, one of the key things about the S24 Ultra is Galaxy AI, right? It was the biggest thing that Samsung leaned into this one in the marketing. At first, I didn't want to get too excited, but I was like, come on, every app now has AI in it. It's, it's the buzzword in every single industry, right? To do stuff with AI. Being open-minded about AI in here, writing assist, for example, is one of the things that I didn't expect it to use all the time because it's so easy to use, right? It's one button in there and you, after you type something, you can just press one button 
and he will come up with this really nice dialogue, really nice animation as well to bring in and lets you choose the tone of the, the text that you want to change to or translate something. That experience, I think I like it more because it's fast. The result is great too, but I do enjoy having a feature that I don't have to dig deep into a menu to go and find. Very intuitively, very, in a way, Apple-like. Another AI feature is the Gen AI photo editing. This one is a little bit more, you know, you have to go into the photo and edit it, and there's a lot more kind of work involved. It's not like you have to open Lightroom or Photoshop. I would say they could improve it in, in the next few versions to say, you know, perhaps when we do edit something, give us maybe two or three options to, to choose from. Adding things allow you to, for example, say, add a, a blue sky or, or change the, the way, you know, this particular object looks or, or what, completely replace the object with something completely different. I think that's gonna be the next uh, level. Now, circle to search was probably the one that for me, it's a nice thing to have. It's nice to know it's there. I've used it maybe once as a real like use case. Like I saw a shirt and I was like, okay, what is that? But it's not something that I would go out of my way to, to use it or... Now using this phone in social media is something that I always forget to mention, right? But because it's so good now, I'm, I'm actually being more inclined to use this phone for things like Instagram, uh, Snapchat. The front-facing camera, I've got to be honest, it does suck, it's, it's not stable at all. But I still think like pre-recording something, if you can, uh, is still a much better experience. And sometimes you can, for example, choose you know, to record two videos at the same time using your recording. And that is a, a hidden gem that not many people are talking about either. You can almost make it look like you, you've got multi cameras. The ideas can be quite creative in that space. Talking about creativity, one thing that, I, you know, in my use case here of, of running this channel, I do sometimes need to record, you know, away from the phone. And I, it's nice to kind of walk around and show things to the camera. And the audio in that case is not really going to be great because you, you're moving away from, from the microphone. And that's where today's sponsors, Hollyland, come in. They just released the Lark M2, and I've actually been using this in every review of the S24 Ultra. One of my favorite things about this brand is that they're more than just okay. And I've been really enjoying this. I mean, look at this size, right? It's the size of a button, super convenient, incredibly light as well. You can put this under your shirt and there's a little magnet in here, then you can attach it under your shirt. You can have a little button like this, even smaller, that connects to the back of this. You can clip it, which is what I'm doing here like my shirt, you can just clip it there. I've used microphones as well, though sometimes, you know, depending on the shirt that you're wearing, they end up getting, you know, a bit droopy and even pointing at a different direction and making the sound, you know, a little bit inconsistent. I'm using the Lark M2 with this camera now, my professional camera, but for my S24 Ultra videos, I've actually been using this receiver on the phone. You connect it via USB-C, you can show something different to your audience without worrying too much about the audio quality, which is really good. And the cool thing about using it with the smartphone, if you install the Lark Sound uh, Companion app, you can then double tap this yellow button here the, on the transmitter, and that will start and stop the recording of the video as well, which again, helps a ton with you not having to touch the phone to start or stop the recording. And what I found really useful is that you can adjust the noise level cancellation as well through the app, and every space is different, so it's really cool to have that feature. It comes with a really nice charging case as well, so as soon as you put it away, it starts charging, and the battery life is fantastic as well, so you can do your vlogs without worrying about the battery life. And because it's so tiny and light, you can really get creative with how you hide it, and you can put it on your hat, you can put it under your hair, you can put it under your shirt, really convenient. To get yours today, just follow the link in the description, or if you're watching this from a TV, just scan the QR code here. And thanks so much, Hollyland, for making this video possible. Is this enough, hey? Uh, can never have enough. Now, one of the big questions that you might be asking right now is, should I get one? I think if you had enough of iPhones, this will be an amazing first Android or a, a, an amazing way to get back into Android if that's your case, because you are gonna enjoy the experience. It's such a smooth, very you know, high performance phone and the display, like I said, there's nothing like it at the moment. But if you're coming in from something like a Fold 5 or an S23 Ultra, right, the newer iPhones, even like the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the 15 Pro Max, I think it's gonna be very difficult for you to see a lot of benefits. There's some really cool different things, some improvements, but they're not worth an upgrade if you're coming from those devices, unless you're getting a really decent deal uh, with your provider. I think, for example, for Fold 5 users, it would be very difficult to recommend this, you know, because Fold 6 is really nearly here. And I think, you know, on your trading and things like that, you might be able to get Fold 6 because that promises to be an amazing phone. And I will be talking about that very soon as well. For S23 Ultra users, I'd say, yeah, only upgrade it if you're not losing money on, on the exchange. Uh, same for iPhone 14 and 15 users. Those iPhones are great. You know, there's really not much else uh, in here apart from 
from a productivity perspective. If you want to be more productive with your phone, that's a good point actually, then absolutely, you are gonna see a difference here. And sometimes, you know, losing $100, $200 is not so much of a loss, right? You are getting a lot more here in that scenario. But if you're just a regular user, you're kind of using the cameras, and browsing content on online you know there's not really much in here that you don't get on the iphone and the newer ones anyway the story is different if you want to be productive with it <coughs> okay maybe too much talking about productive i've got to go now this video over here was basically a movie that i did comparing all of these phones and i hope to see you there if you've seen that one already youtube thinks you're gonna like this one as well i hope to see you soon cheers